Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. When the improved version of the Pen BBS 355 came out last spring, I got caught up in the feeding frenzy on Etsy, buying a total of four of the new models. Uh, Misty Mountains, which I co-reviewed with my fellow YouTube reviewer Alan Light of What I Ink, and Amber is a Cat, which I reviewed in a model evaluation of other Amber is a Cat Pen BBS pens just a couple of weeks ago. A Niangao, and this Galaxy. I gave the Misty Mountains to my daughter as a present, and have yet to ink up the Niangao, saving it for a comparison with my Niango 456. But this 355 Galaxy might compete with the best Pen BBS nib I own, which is on my top 10 of 2020 list pens, the Moonman M800. I will be posting my top 10 fountain pens of 2020 list a week this coming Saturday, December 19th. And this coming Saturday, I will be showcasing my long-awaited Myora Impronte Terra Oversize. But now, let's take a look at the sixth star in my Galaxy of Galaxies, this beautiful Pen BBS 355 Galaxy, right now. So it has been exactly 13 weeks and five days since I ordered these pens as part of a feeding frenzy on Etsy. We have one white box with a 355. We have different box because it's a different 355. And yet another different box with a 355. And of course I forgot that I had purchased another nib. I've forgotten about you. And the final one, this is the one that I was really interested in because this is, I think, my favorite. Oh, I do get a taco. Isn't that nice? Well, I'm very pleased. And a beautiful taco, too. Look at this. It's got rose colors of dragonfly. Beautiful. Look at this. That's just beautiful, and it's got some sheen to it as well, like the pen does. Let's take it out of its condom, where it's been sitting for four months. That is gorgeous. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. As you saw from the unboxing, I received this Galaxy 355 in August as part of an order I placed with two other 355s in Amber and Niango. I placed that order on April 30th and it took 13 weeks to deliver. And here we are on December 9th, exactly 17 weeks from when I unboxed this pen and a full 30 weeks or seven months and nine days from when I ordered it. And I just inked it up last week for the first time. I've purchased so many Pen BBS pens over the last seven months that I'd almost be doing a Pen BBS video a week if I didn't space them out. And some viewers have complained that I do too many Pen BBS videos. <laughs> But in my mind, they are the best quality turned acrylic fountain pens for the money on the market today. And what's great about their price points is that they are affordable enough to be able to collect their many models in multiple finishes. And I have another two, four, five, six vacuum fillers on their way to me in a few weeks. One in Galaxy, of course, and one in that rare finish, Tootsie like my 323 Tootsie right here. Marvelous finish. And this is the improved version of the 355 bulk filler. Even though I have gone over the details of this pen and its differences with the original version, especially in my co-review of the Misty Mountains version with Alan Light of What I Ink, 
it bears repeating for new viewers why the improved version of the 355 is a significant upgrade to the old one. And I will do that as I go through the parts and features. First off, the finish, Galaxy. Wait a minute, Skywalker's on that ship. You can sense him? No, he's right there. Even though I have a real soft spot for Amber is a Cat finish, with its cute cat's paw nib, Galaxy has become probably my favorite finish. It is blue, chatoyant, shimmering, and full of depth and character. I'm convinced my Moonman M800 Galaxy is from the same stock as the Pen BBS. Perhaps you can see the similarities. And let's look at all the galaxies clustered together. You see what I did there? There are in fact a hundred billion other galaxies, each of which contains something like a hundred billion stars. Here is the 355 and my 308. my 480 my 487 magnetic piston filler and the Moonman M800 I hope you can tell why I adore this finish so much I had a 500 Galaxy as well but I gave that to my son for his birthday in fact, while I was demonstrating how the spring filler worked to him when I gave it to him on his birthday, I squirted ink all over him. Uh... Who are you? What are you doing with that? This! <laughs> it was the highlight of the party. So, from the top, we see there is a tapering flat top acrylic finial and thin chrome ring which secure the sword shaped chrome metal clip and I see your Schwartz is as big as mine which is stiff but usable the acrylic cap is then straight until we get to a wide chrome metal cap band which has a single groove and pen BBS and the model number stamped into it. Then the band tapers down quite significantly to allow for a seamless step to the barrel, which is made of the same Galaxy acrylic, and it is straight for most of its length until about here. It begins to taper, and we see another chrome metal ring, which separates the uh, turning knob, the piston turning knob, which also tapers to a flat bottom. On the sides of the knob, you'll see there's a couple of dots, which are the ends of pins that hold the knob to the piston rod. The knob unscrews, which allows the piston rod to be withdrawn, but also disengages the shutoff valve, which we will get to in a moment. The cap unscrews with one and a half turns, to reveal a tapering acrylic section with a small flare towards a number six size pen bbs mini fude or waverly style number six size steel nib which has that familiar upturned tip let's get a closer look at that nib it has the pen bbs scroll work around the outside and says pen bbs since 2005 and an F for fine and China. And there is the plastic feed. The nib and feed are in a collar assembly that can be unscrewed and replaced using other Pen BBS nib assemblies, which you can get in various sizes for five bucks at the official Pen BBS store on Etsy in these lovely nib charms, uh, which are key fobs. And they come in different sizes. This one is an extra fine, so it's got an E on there. But you just screw, unscrew, 
that nib and feed assembly and screw it into the section to replace your nib. The nib and feed are also friction fit into that collar so you can replace that with most number six size nibs from Yovo to Bach and Schmidt to Nemacine. There's plenty of cap clearance in the 355 cap for that. The cap posts but not very deeply. Uh, it is fairly secure but it makes the pen back weighted and um, also makes it a bit long and unwieldy. This is one of the bugaboos I have about this model. One of the very few issues I have with it. Now on to the filling mechanism. Because this Galaxy is full of ink, My God, it's full of stars. I'm going to demonstrate with two other 355s. An original model in Aurora, this one, and this one in Niangao. The Aurora is transparent, so you can see the piston working, and the Niangao has the new improved rod capture mechanism. To fill a bulk filler, sometimes called a syringe filler, you simply unscrew the piston knob and withdraw the rod, and then keep turning in that direction to engage, in this case, those screw threads with the piston. This is where the old and the new systems begin to differ. With this old version, you pull back on the rod until you ha hear a click, and then you can push it forward, and it disengages the piston from the end, and you run the piston down, insert your pen into the ink, and draw up ink like a syringe. Once you've done that, you pull up on the piston and it clicks in place in the back collar there and then you turn the knob the opposite direction as if you were closing the cap and then push the rod back into the pen and close it down. The old version had some drawbacks, pardon the pun. You're pathetic! <sighs> If the rod gets screwed back into the piston too tightly, uh, after you've pushed the piston down, filled the pen, and then pulled it back, snap, it doesn't release again if it's too tight in there. And that piston will just start to rotate. And then you're in trouble. You have a pen full of ink and a piston rod that won't disengage. Uh, so you have to open the pen up and that's a messy business and a bit of a pain um, and so that's why this 355 old style was a, a bit of a bother for many people the new system has a bayonet instead of a screw thread to engage that piston rod into the piston and i can take this apart to show you if you unscrew this back section from the barrel so here you see the component parts of the bayonet system in the new improved version. We have sort of the same kind of um, end of the piston rod with that little rubber gasket, which is the shutoff valve, and the same kind of piston. And the rod comes back and turns and engages into that piston. When you pull the rod back, there are some knobs here on the end of the piston that fit into these slots. And then when you turn it the opposite direction, it holds that piston in place so that you can unscrew that rod. So now that it's back together again, the process is unscrew the knob, retract the rod, keep turning in that same direction until it's tight, then push the piston forward and I've taken the section off so you can see that now the piston is running up and down there you might be able to see it through that Niango finish and we draw up the ink into the pen and once we've got the pen full then we turn it in the other direction as if we were closing it and it unscrews 
that rod from the piston which is now captured in that bayonet and then we push the rod back in and close it down in both versions when you push that rod back down again of course that rod is in the middle of all the ink that's in there and it moves up and displaces ink and that ink will shoot out the nib so it's vitally important that you keep the nib in the ink while you push that rod back down so that the ink that's displaced by that rod goes out into your ink bottle and not onto your hands or onto your desk then you can close it down and with this old version we'll see more clearly how that shutoff valve works when we disengage it you can see how it moves that little stopper back from the end of the section and then when you close it down it plugs that hole up and so you're sealing off the nib to the section from the rest of the ink chamber and that uh, allows you to save the pen from air pressure changes like when you're on an aircraft or temperature changes which change the air pressure in there and that cause the pen to burp the 355 has been accused in various places from reddit to the fountain pen network and even in my own pen group as being a ripoff of the conid bulk filler this is utter nonsense and couldn't be further from the truth conid didn't patent the engineering mechanism and principle of a syringe they patented their brilliantly designed rod capture mechanism which is entirely different from either the old or the new versions of the 355 of course if you want a conid bulk filler which retails for around 750 dollars us instead of a pen bbs 355 bulk filler for around 32 dollars us for the base finishes well you're currently out of luck because conid has stopped accepting orders in the meantime this galaxy 355 is currently filled with leonardo blue and i wanted to show you how quick and easy this is with the new mechanism even with an opaque finish one of the reasons that people shy away from the opaque finishes in the 355 bulk filler and the 456 vacuum filler models is because you can't see what's happening when you're filling and you can't see ink levels when you're writing so let's tackle both those issues and I'll show you why I'm not afraid of the galaxy first of all let's look at filling the galaxy 355 unscrew retract the rod continue to screw it in that direction until it's tight and then you can push the piston now this is full of ink so I'm going to be pushing ink back out into my bottle just like that he's a brave man and let's fill it up again that piston is engaged and I just simply draw it up and I'm drawing ink now I don't know how much ink I've got in this pen right now but if I push it back down again I hear bubbles hey what's the best without bubbles hey bubbles come over here will you <laughs> in the ink and then I draw it back up again and back down and I can just keep repeating that until I don't hear bubbles anymore and there now I know that there's no air in there at all and I've got as full a fill as I can get now at this point I'm going to very carefully to show you I'm going to turn it back as if I'm closing it I turn that rod I'm not pushing it this way I'm just going to keep turning that until I can feel that it's actually turning freely now I'm going to put the ink put the pen back down over the ink bottle and push down on that rod and it's going down without the piston at this point and you can see there's a few drops of ink that come out that's natural because of the dis because it's the displacement of that rod displacing ink 
as that rod takes up space inside that chamber. Now I just have to wipe down my nib as you would ordinarily and I've got a very full fill. Now I can continue to write and I like to check on my ink levels on most of my pens. And how would you do that on a regular cartridge converter pen like this? Or let's even look at a fully opaque pen like this Platinum President. Well, how do you check ink levels on this? Oh my God, what a f***ing nightmare! Well, it's fairly simple, right? Everybody does this. You remove the section, you check on your ink level. Sometimes you twist the converter a little bit, maybe, but you see whether you need to fill or not. It's just that simple. Well, it's not that much different with the Galaxy 355. I know that I've got a lot of ink in here, but the section comes off. All I have to do is keep the pen nib up and carefully remove the section. And then I can see how much ink I've got. And you can even turn that rod if you can't see ink there and pull the rod down and you can see you can see right in there what your ink level is now just push that rod back up with the section off tighten it down put the section back on it's not that much different than unscrewing the section and checking on a converter so it's not that big a deal this Galaxy 355 was $50 US and is currently unavailable. There are currently seven different finishes available for the 355 on the Etsy Pen BBS store. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Pen BBS 355 Galaxy with a Moonman M800, a Jinhao Centennial, a Maiora Impronte. Terra Oversize and a Lamy Safari. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And you can see why I like the M800 so much. It posts nicely and deeply. Doesn't make the pen too long and doesn't back weight the pen. Whereas the 355 back weights significantly and makes it way too long. But you'll also notice why I love the M800 Moonman because I've got a Pen BBS fine nib in it. That came out of a 456 and you'll find in the writing sample in a moment that this nib right here might be a little bit better than that one and this Jinhao Centennial does not have the original nib turn it slightly so you can see that is the italics nib that I just pulled out of the italics Chaplin's tankard that I reviewed recently and finally got the nib out of this Jinhao Centennial and replaced it with the italics and this pen is now marvelous and also this is a little bit of a preview this is the Maiora Impronte that I just received I've been writing with it for about a week and a half now and you'll see the review on this pen next Saturday and of course the Lamy Safari for size now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample <music> And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Pen BBS three five five Galaxy, and it has a fine mini food a. steel nib and the ink today is Leonardo blue here is the swatch for the Leonardo blue 
along with some Hiroshizuku Kanpeki, which is a very nice match, and some Dimene Jack Frost. Now let's check the wetness. This is a very wet pen. And I'm just going to speak about it briefly here. It's very wet now. It was not like this out of the box last week. Here is the first test of this pen out of the box. As you can see, it is very dry right here. And the ink displays very light and thin. This is very typical of how pen BBS nibs behave normally out of the box. In the past, I've taken my spark plug gapping tool and flossed the nib a little bit uh, to get it to write a little bit wetter. But in the last two pen BBS nibs I've had, I've tried just giving the nib a bit of a push. Here you can see where I push the nib very carefully to keep it from springy but just a little bit of pressure to open the tines. And I made seven strokes here. And this is how it wrote immediately after, right there. And there is the wetness test. There's the first wetness test, there's the second one after the strokes. Again, I have to emphasize that I did not push the nib hard enough to spring it. It's very easy to do if you give it the kind of pressure you would say a ballpoint. So don't do that. And as to line variation, well, I'm not even going to try it because this is a very stiff nib. And as you can see, as I showed you, I already pushed it quite a bit. And it's now very wet and very smooth. Now the nib writes beautifully. And it is smooth and a gusher. This is like glass. In fact, it's so smooth and so slippery that I might introduce a little bit more feedback into that nib by giving it a couple of strokes on my 8000 grit micro mesh. But I would probably stroke it a couple of times and then write with it another couple of times write with it until I get the right amount of traction or drag on that nib that I like. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out at 0.5 millimeters, which is a Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium. And for our quote today, And for some reverse writing, it works. It's very scratchy and very yeah, dry. And it's ripping up that page a bit. And for some quick writing. As you can see, that has no issues whatsoever. Very wet pen. So, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? I've done a few head-to-head -head comparisons of various models of pen BBS before. My most recent comparison video looked at six models. Three cartridge converter models, the 308, 323, and 480. And three larger filling systems in the 355 bulk filler, 456 vacuum filler, and the 500 spring filler. The 355 came second to the 456 vacuum filler in that analysis on account of one issue, and that is the way the 355 posts, which is, in my estimation, poorly. This is my biggest problem with the 355. The pen does not post satisfactorily, whereas the wrong one there for a moment, whereas the 456, here's my 456 Amber, has got a slim enough barrel and tail that it posts 
deeply and securely and ends up being a good length and not significantly back weighted but if posting isn't an issue for you then the 355 is an extremely well balanced and comfortable pen unposted the improvement in this pen from the old model from the old screw capture system to this bayonet mechanism has raised this 355 model to be one of the very best that pen bbs offers in my opinion the best thing about this particular galaxy 355 other than the exquisite acrylic is this nib i've been writing with this pen for about a week and it is seriously contending with my moon man m800 for top of the heap in terms of the best pen bbs nib i own this nib is smooth and glassy and wet and it only took seven strokes to get it writing like this not seven strokes seven pushes to get it writing like this no tools no micro mash the pen takes no pressure at all to write on the page and is just a joy to write with this pen takes a huge amount of ink and the fact that it isn't opaque doesn't impede your ability to check the ink levels because you can open up the section like I showed you the filling system is now so simple it only takes moments to master a full fill the shutoff valve gives you the ability to isolate that section so changes in air pressure caused by aircraft travel or temperature changes will not expel ink simply open this knob to allow the ink to flow back into the section other than a lack of good posting the only other thing that is a slight detriment to this pen is these two metal divots here and here on the piston knob they are flush so you don't feel them but i think they could have found a better way to secure that knob to the end of the rod if i rated pens which i don't do anymore i would say this pen gets like a 9.5 out of 10. the fact that this is one of the best pens in my entire collection which includes Visconti's and Leonardo's and only costs $50 says a great deal about its quality build engineering and design kudos to Geelong and his crew for another excellent fountain pen one of the knocks that people have against pen BBS fountain pens is their lack of variety of nibs there are no stubs italics or broads or double broads available however with this easily swapped number six size nib you can put almost any number six size nib in there uh, that you wish and there you have it well are we stopped we're stopped sir good well, why don't we take a five minute break very good sir smoke if you got them if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote